The headlines this hour. New figures reveal Britain spent 13 times more on bombing Libya than it did to rebuild destroyed towns and cities. As the Iran nuclear deal descends into a diplomatic spat between the US and Israel, there's speculation that Washington's got a plan to sweeten its ally. Also ahead this hour, the beach that is out of reach. The Saudi king cordons off part of the French Riviera for his own personal use, leading to uproar amongst locals. on midday this Monday the 27th of July here in Moscow. My name's Yunan O'Neill. Welcome to RT International. Britain finds it much easier to bomb than rebuild in its actions abroad. That's according to new revelations by Parliament. Westminster files show that the UK dropped 320 million pounds worth of bombs on Libya. That is 13 times more than Britain's contribution to rebuilding the war-torn country. One MP from the Scottish National Party referred to the yawning spending gap as eye-watering. Four years ago, though, Prime Minister Cameron was praising the UK's bombing efforts in Libya. You threw off a dictator and chose freedom. And while we are proud of the role that we played to help, we know this was your revolution. Although it's arguably fair to question what that freedom means in Libya right now after years of lawlessness. Well, as our news wall is about to show, Libya today is deeply divided, as armed gangs settle their differences with gunfire. The internationally recognized government controls only half of the country, this area, while the capital, Tripoli, over here, has been overridden by the opposing Libya Dawn coalition. And these red dots, well, they show cities fought over by Islamic State. Catherine Shakdam from the Beirut Center for Middle East Studies explained to us why she thinks the West is not interested in rebuilding Libya. If there is chaos now, it's because the way those wars have been conducted. Until we understand that, you know, the UK and their allies, again, have helped fund it, you know, uh, unrest because they wanted to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi at the time. They themselves created the problem that we are facing now, which is radicalism and this fragmentation, you know, of all those militia within Libya, uh, which are leading to the impossibility to build peace. We were sold democracy building. We know not that that wasn't the case at all. Um, so if you look at why those wars were waged, which was essentially to, you know, grab hold um, and control over natural resources, then your understanding of those wars become, you know, more um, evident. Well, amid all the turmoil, Libya's prisons are packed with supporters of the ousted leader Muammar Gaddafi. One of the most high profile is a son of the deposed colonel. He's being tried for alleged war crimes, and the court is expected to deliver its final verdict on Tuesday. Believed to be his father's favorite, Saif Gaddafi was long considered to be the second most influential figure in Libya, even though he held no official position. Before the revolution, he was seen as the key reformist there. Saif was well known amongst the creme de la creme of British society. He was once hosted at Buckingham Palace by the royal family. He would also spend a few days at the mansions of the Rothschilds. One of Saif Gaddafi's lawyers describes his trial as a mockery of justice. As for the trial itself, it's, um, it's really been a, a show trial. There can be no other description really of it than that. The trials are taking place in Tripoli in conditions of complete insecurity, where there are killings every day, and where there's an atmosphere of intimidation hanging over the whole proceedings. So lawyers are intimidated, the judges are intimidated, uh, lawyers have had to leave the case. They're, the prosecution isn't calling any witnesses who so can be cross-examined. They're relying on interrogations, which are often tainted by torture as the UN Rapporteur on Torture has said, and the defence are only allowed two witnesses, and there are no protective measures for witnesses. So you can imagine with this atmosphere of, of insecurity and intimidation, uh, defence witnesses aren't willing to come forward. Also in the dock is Libya's former head of the intelligence service, Abu Zayed Dorda. His son described what his father has been put through. Since the day of his arrest, my father has been tortured. He's survived one 
I can't add his life where he was thrown from the second floor of the building. Um, he spent a couple of months in a military hospital, and from there on, he was kidnapped by a separate militia and taken to the Hadba prison. The Minister of Justice himself in the internationally recognized government has stated that the judicial system in the country has collapsed, renouncing all responsibility of the current show trial in Tripoli, and declared that any judicial proceedings that are conducted outside the government's authority is illegal. My father is currently on his fourth lawyer. His first lawyer fled the country after she was threatened. And the third lawyer was threatened several times. He was shot at more than once, but he was brave enough to continue on defending my father until when he was given permission to visit my father in prison. He was arrested in the same prison as my father for a day where he was abused and then we got a call from my lawyer the next day saying that he can't go on any longer and that he's going to step down. We are keeping close watch on the controversial trials of former Libyan top brass. So do stay with RT for all the developments from the Yelling Nation. It is Liberation Day in Libya. The transitional government is declaring the country free. You have won a revolution. Your friends in Britain and in France will stand with you as you build your democracy. Democracy, a new future for this country. For the great new Libya rising up. New page for the Libyan people, the start of a process to establish democracy. Libya is in for a, a period of, of horrendous chaos. It's going to be an ineffective, uh, powerless regime. It's going to be a, a, a war, warring feuds, uh, tribal feuds that is going to go on forever. The deteriorating situation in Libya. It's difficult to see a path out of this chaos. Libya is not managed anymore, not even governed anymore. It is experiencing chaos, and the question is, how is it that after an intervention which took place more than three years ago, there has been no reflection on what should happen after? To another of the day's headline stories. The Iranian nuclear deal is turning into a headache for the Obama administration. Last week, the document faced strong opposition in Congress. Now it's fueling a diplomatic clash with Israel. I fear that what could happen is if Congress were to overturn it, our friends in Israel could actually wind up being more isolated and more blamed. We reject the threats directed at Israel in recent days. The regrettable attempt to intimidate Israel will not prevent us from voicing our concerns about this deal, which poses direct threats to Israel's security. 